Thank you very much. I want to say how much I appreciate the invitation to be here, Terry, and also excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. The state of the world, I believe, is a outdated past and a broken present and evolving future. Let me say it succinctly in these few minutes, the three major pillars that we deal with the state of the world, one, economics, two, societal, and largely political. Let me start with the economics part. I believe there are five major key areas in the economic state of the world that we need to look at them as a, a key examples of what we are at contemporary. The first thing would be disparity. Disparity of the half and the have not. I think it's the wrong slide. That's okay. Let me just walk you through without a PowerPoint. The first point would be, I think the contemporary world is at the state of disparity of the have and the have not. What do I mean by that? You can see, about 15 years ago, I created a rule in one of my articles would be the rule of 991. Basically, the tendency is to have 1% of the people able to accumulate 99% of the wealth and assets. These are the disparity tendency without intervention. And there's all kinds of good and bad interventions. Bad interventions could even do it make it worse. But good kind of interventions need to be thought through. But what we have seen is the world with capital have and capital have not. Education have and education have not. Skill have and skill have not. You also see technological have and technological have not. Innovation have and innovation have not. And this is clearly set the scene for disparity in the world today. How do we go through the world when disparity cannot be solved and a stubborn problem that could not be tackled and you're going to create even more and more problem? We've seen some examples of the conducive environment where we see the IS at work and this we know there must be underlying problem that disparity is so conducive to, for example. My second thing that I'd like to mention economically would be the rising of the new CIA. Let me mention to you the new term I coined some years ago again in my article. The rising of the new CIA would be C is China, I is India, and A is ASEAN. And this block of countries comprises more than half of the world population. And they are rising. Though some of you can see clearly the rising China, which is almost there, the rising India, which is follow suit, and the clear engine of the ASEAN, if they can stay together and integrated and not falling by the wayside, the three blocks combined, ASEAN gluing the not often able to be together of India and China, we could be a formidable issue of the future. My third ideas I would like to mention in the economic situation would be multinational corporations as kings. We have seen this for years now, and it's going to be even more prevalent in the coming futures. For example, just looking at the situation of China and India, in the year 2003, we have 19 of our top 500 corporations that are from these countries. But a few years ago, 2012, 127 of the top 500 are from India and China. These are the rising indicators of what is coming. The multinational corporations will expand and continue to dominate. My fourth key ideas I would like to mention is I call technological convergence innovation. I do believe that we are living in a highly technological breakthrough in many spheres. 
but yet to see the real convergence of all this technology in combination. And once it precipitates in innovations, it will drive even more in the coming future. Last point in the economic sphere would be governance crisis. I have noticed in the world in these last many years that the crisis are coming more and more due to the lack of architecture of international governance that cannot be worked out fully, not only in each country, but in the global scale. Now, let me turn quickly to the second pillar, the societal pillar. Again, five key areas I want to mention. One, I see the issue of aging population coming even more at the forefront and faster than we think. We're going to have a lot of old people, over 65 years of age, more than roughly 17% soon and very soon. And this will present to us a problem we have never experienced in the entire human history. The second thing is refugee and migration crisis. Not only domestic migration due to displacement of people due to internal revolt and shift of power base, but also international migration that will take on a major key issues that you're already seeing so in the last few years in Europe, taking refugees from other parts of the world. This is going to be more due to the turbulent world we are living in. I also see clearly the urbanization issues that are coming forward. Recently, I wrote an article in my own uh, in my own newspaper column, that we need to coin a new term called Magna City, which is going to come. Urbanization in number has already seen half of the world living in the urban areas. It will be 70% in the next few many years. But what is more interesting is how do cities of mega size and meta size no longer going to be the issue of the future, but the future will be Cities, what I call magna city, which takes on the characteristics of a huge number of people living together, more than 50 million people in one continual block. That's going to be a landmass of density that we don't know how to manage yet, and is beyond what we have learned in human history. Urbanization that take on the various dimensions would challenge us. Bring me to the fourth dimension also, what I call morality frontiers challenges. Due to many issues that have emerged, technological advancements that bring about issues that we need to crack through, ethics, morality, that is behind those implications, it's going to come more and more into the forefront of the liberation of this issue. We, we will see not only the cloning, that is an old issue, that is going to come back again, issue of mercy killing, sexual revolution, the AI and robotic improvement that go so far will bring about morality issue that we need to deal with in the coming days. We also have a, the last five, fifth issue of the societal pillars that I see coming clearly seen is terrorism fatigue. And this is, is not only is here everywhere, we accept it and we don't know how to solve it, it's a fatigue which make it weigh down the entire world of how to handle this properly. Let me quickly turn to my last pillar, political pillars. Five things again that I want to mention. One, we have already passed the age of bipolarity to hegemony of, of unipolarity, but it's moving to multipolarity with subgrouping within each of those polars. We are seeing this experiencing through the walking through in and out of various blocks and the various alliances going to be rebuilt, built again and recreated in a new ways. This is the world, political world that we're going to live in. My second issue in political pillar would be moving from New World Order to post-New World Order. What do I mean by that? The liberal order that we have seen in the New World Order will be shifted towards, I think, 
what I call the pragmatism or pragmatic order. What we have seen, the announcement that come through President Trump, I concur with Richard Cooper from Harvard, that it wasn't really true protectionism. It's actually it's selective protectionism, our pragmatic benefits that you are gaining. And this is going to be some issue that would be on the table. Pragmatism of Turkey, in EU, out of EU, joining NATO, not joining NATO, moving in with Russia, or India or not, those are some pragmatism. Brexit, we no longer are people who are ideologically consistent. We are people who are more and more result-oriented. And pragmatic result is what we're getting at. You can see Trump announcing America first, national common good instead of global common goods. That is the issue pragmatically being dealt with at hand of desperation because of the government of each country are no longer sovereign as it meant to be. The erosion of the sovereignty of each uh, sovereign state has come through the age of globalization that we have never seen like this before. And this is the real issue that is changing many things. My third point that I want to mention, the political pillar will be separatism syndrome. You notice that separatists are coming more and more as a reaction to the inability to, uh, to solve problems in certain cluster of grouping of affinity, be it ethnics, religious, or many other groupings. You see the self-determination effort to rely on themselves by separate out. See the Brexit issue, the Scotland, the North Ireland, Wales, and the UK, Basque from Spain and France, Catalonia and from Spain. You've seen the issue of Lombardia, Italy, and many other places, Kurdistan, that want to come out from Turkey, from Iran, Iraq, Syria, Tibet, Uyghur from China, Taiwan, all these issues, I call them separatism syndrome, as a reaction to try to have some self-determination in a world where they cannot control and cannot rely on a broader grouping. My fourth example would be what I call non-professional politicians. Being a politician myself for many years, I have noticed that you no longer professional politicians that are being called upon the world is definitely grasping for an unconventional way, an unconventional style of politics, anti-establishment that have no hope. And they're searching for all kinds. You look at the world having Trumps, having Duterte of Philippines, having people like Jacobi, which is unconventional in Indonesia. All types and the young leaders that emerge, which we can never dream of way back, are happening, being elected everywhere, is calling for unprofessional politicians who are going to be different from the establishment they, are, they have been used to. And finally, my last example would be democratic breakdown. I have noticed carefully when I was working together with Bartman uh, people in Germany in the Demo Democracy Index for many years in the last decade, I noticed that countries have turned democratic at least in form, democratic election, for example, are not increasing, but decreasing. You notice that the year 2000, 120 countries out of 192 are democratic. By the year, 12 years later, 118 out of 194 are democratic. The percentage has decreased. We are not moving forward, we are moving backward. We are rolling backward. The coup d'etat could never have been expected for many places have been experienced, even in my own country. We was a shining star for democracy in many decades ago. We rolled back to the coup d'etat government. Freedom of the people index have measured the going down of the freedom of the people. Therefore, let me conclude by mentioning these three pillars, economic, societal, and political pillars. And the five examples I cited for each of these categories are the contemporary world of the state of the world we're living in, what am I saying? I'm suggesting a definition of what I call thinking revolution that needed. What is a revolution in a nutshell? It starts with a thinking revolution. What is a thinking revolution? It is a change at the foundation and the fundamental, with both of them are different. 
until it changed the paradigm of economics, political, and social paradigms. Without that, that's not a revolution indeed. I think there is a need for a new revolution coming that will change the entire architecture of the new global order so that economic, political, and social paradigms will be shifted and changed because today we experience a broken world that we could not repair. It needs a revolution indeed.